Hi everybody, my name's Dr. Christopher Collison and we're going to continue today with our classes on uh, writing and we're going to start thinking about how to write the introduction to our thesis. We're going to think about writing mind maps and we're going to build on coherence from previous lectures to try to connect various themes under uh, the foundation or under the arch rather of uh, a key problem that we're trying to address with our work. So have a think about um, your hypothesis that you're going to be working on uh, provided to you by your advisor and we're going to think about unpacking that in the next few slides to build a table of contents. I hope you enjoy. Thank you. So we're continuing with our course uh, Chemistry 670. This is week six and we're still talking about writing clear, concise and compelling. So if we quickly review the work from week five, uh, in week five we talked about engaging our audience and framing uh, problems uh, so that the audience would understand why we were doing the work that we were doing. This would bring the audience along and it also provides a theme, that problem becomes an overarching theme that we can develop at least in a way of building a solution to address that problem. As we move on to week six, uh, we're going to start to think about uh, writing the introduction to our thesis and we're going to use mind maps uh, to build from the connections, the coherence that we've talked about in prior videos. So we're going to build these mind maps and try to connect together a whole bunch of different subsections and sub themes that all fit under the, the overarching theme of the hypothesis for our thesis. And I'll do this with some examples as we move forward. So you're all in a situation now where you have uh, a project that your advisor has provided with you. Um, so it's important next to consider um, a hypothesis that you're going to be testing during the course of your studies. So as an example, let's suppose that my advisor has provided a, a hypothesis as follows. Um, she said to me, uh, the rate of energy transfer decreases when square ends are packed in a crystalline form. So the implication there is I need to confirm or reject the idea that the rate of energy transfer decreases when these square ends are packed in a crystalline form. This is what I have. This is uh, 13, 14 words and I need to try to unpack that. I need to understand how to build an introduction uh, to the thesis from this. And as I unpack the hypothesis, the best way of, of building that introduction is to create a mind map. So how do I do this? Well, first of all, I start by unpacking the, um, the hypothesis. And the key words that came out of this were rate. And it was the rate of energy transfer in particular. Um, Square ends, these are a particular type of material, so I can go and look that up or I can find that out in conversation with my advisor and crystal packing. So let's go through these in a little bit more detail. Let's think about how we can build a mind map around these four key words. Uh, and let's start by thinking about coherence. What's the why that links together all these um, key uh, words? Don't forget to keep talking to your advisor, ask questions. Um, I'll talk about questions more and more as we go through the rest of this presentation. Um, but I think the first question we might ask is, is why do we care about this particular hypothesis? And last week I talked about working backwards to find a pragmatic problem. So what's the pragmatic problem that um, is the foundation for the work that's going to be done in my thesis? So here's how my mind map might start to be built. I would recommend you do this on a, a larger sheet of paper uh, and just let your mind go. Um, so the problem, one problem perhaps, is that organic photovoltaics are not so efficient. Again, well, why would why would we care? So we've got to to recognise that there was a there was a, a problem that leads to organic photovoltaics, and that problem we're trying to solve is is 
is renewable energy. Um, so climate change is actually the problem in here. Um, and renewable energy is one of the solutions. And one of the solutions in that portfolio of re renewable energy is our um, organic photovoltaics. But immediately now we've got a new problem because if these organic photovoltaics are not efficient, then we need to do something about that. So I'm constantly thinking about problems and solutions that I'm going to put in the first few paragraphs of my of my um, introduction. The other thing is, if I'm going to make a difference in climate change, I might want to think about commercial viability. So this commercial viability also links uh, to to photovoltaics and and also impacts um, whether or not I can reduce climate change with with my products. I've also already mentioned that if uh, at the moment organic photovoltaic solar cells are not efficient, then we also have to find a way of getting to high efficiency. So um, what you'll see is that these ideas come out and we start to try to link them together. We try to understand the connections between them. Um, if I'm going to understand how to improve the efficiency, then I have to understand how solar cells work, how organic photovoltaics work. And so I need to understand the mechanism of operation. And from that mechanism, by the way, in this particular case, I might come up with five or six different subsections. But at least the one that's, that's most important at the moment is what's the connection between energy transfer uh, in, these, in these dyes and what's that connection between energy transfer and the mechanism of operation. So this is basically uh, a, a summary working backwards uh, from the hypothesis to this pragmatic problem in here. So this is going to be really the start of the introduction, but I've already identified a whole bunch of different sections that I can put into my introduction. And that will help me later as I'm building my table of contents. So if we move forward now from the hypothesis topic, so, so now we've, we've figured out maybe the underlying theme, but if we work forward from the hypothesis topics, uh, and first of all, let's start to look at energy transfer. Well, again, we might say, well, what is energy transfer? We start to ask more questions about this particular keyword of energy transfer. Uh, how does energy transfer work? If I go to the textbooks, if I start doing a search online for this, you know, maybe at first just in Wikipedia or, uh, and then I can identify some textbooks or I go to some photophysical chemistry textbooks, I find that there are two mechanisms uh, for energy transfer, Dexter and Furster. So these could be two different paragraphs or two different subsections in my introduction. Um, it turns out that going into more detail in these in these mechanisms of energy transfer, I can identify the absorbance spectra and emission spectra. So these processes are important in my dyes that I care about. We might also start to say, well, how do we test for energy transfer? How do we do that experimentally? Right. So this is an experimental um, area or avenue of, of exploration. Um, and of course, we can pull this all up from the literature always when we're looking at these um, particular subsections and when we're doing our mind map, we have to think that we're going to populate these subsections from the literature. So let me just make a note of that here. OK, that basically says who has done the work on energy transfer already uh, that that is in the literature. So this is how these things are, are connected. Um, and then we might also have a subsection as to what applications um, value uh, improved energy transfer in, in materials, right? What um, applications in, in life? Is it just solar cells? Um, is it um, organic semiconductors? Is it organic transistors? Um, so we can start to think about different applications. The, the mind map keeps expanding. Next up, I'm going to talk about squareanes. So these squareanes are, are, are molecules. We're not going to uh, worry about the molecular structure for this um, demonstration. But now here is my, my mind map already written out. These are molecular dyes. They're also conjugated molecules. Okay. Um, 
if I keep digging in the literature, I also find that these um, conjugated molecules, these small molecules, actually replace polymers in organic photovoltaics. Um, what are molecular dyes, by the way? Uh, it turns out that, that this connects with the conjugated nature of these dyes. So, so that also tells me that there's a certain structure, a certain molecular structure that guides the function of these materials. So that ends up being important. Um, who makes the square rings that I'm interested in? Who will actually make them for my project? Okay, so I can start identifying other collaborators within the department who might help me. Who makes them? Okay, that that's a synthesis issue. And once again, this comes down to, to the literature and I can find lots of material in the literature that helps me write my introduction. I mentioned earlier the importance of relentlessly asking questions and this helps us in our mind map. This is how we build our mind map. Um, so the other term that I cared about in my hypothesis was crystal structure. So I might start to ask certain questions. What determines crystal structure um, in a material? Um, what determines whether that material is amorphous, is glass-like, or whether it's crystalline? Um, with these particular materials, um, it's interesting to look at solid state versus these dyes in solution. Um, in organic photovoltaics, I have these mixtures typically. So um, what happens to my crystal structure if, if I have a, a mixture? Okay, and, and how likely am I to get a crystal structure if I have a pure um, uh, squaring in my system? Um, what is the crystal packing? Has there been X-ray diffraction done um, on these particular materials? These questions keep coming up as I delve more and more into the literature. So again, the literature is important. Um, we will also think about uh, in, in my project, um, when I talk to my advisor, when I read the, the literature, I'll understand the importance of, of kinetics and thermodynamics in terms of um, building uh, a, a stable uh, mixture phase or stable pure phase. So anyway, I can go on and on. The point here is that we might end up with about 20 different subsections. Perhaps each of those subsections has two or three paragraphs in it, and each paragraph may have about 100 words. So we can quickly see how this approach, this mind map building, allows us to get closer towards the 5,000 words required for our introduction. And this is where we're heading. So um, your job this coming week, identify sections and subsections. Identify key themes. Um, and these might be the themes that you might use. These might be the section headers in your introduction. You might do one section that contains all of your literature review. You might have one section that introduces the techniques and measurements that you're going to use in the remainder of your thesis. You might talk about chemical synthesis and pro properties of the materials you're working with. You might talk about the applications of the materials you're working with. Uh, in my particular example, um, the organic photovoltaic mechanism would clearly have been an important um, section. Uh, and the pragmatic problem is, of course, the overarching theme. Physical processes, again, in my particular case, that's perhaps the structure and function, which uh, the, the physical processes connects the structure and function of the molecules with the operation of the um, organic photovoltaics. And then finally, the most important thing right at the end here, it's been staring us in the face, but the last thing in your introduction is restate the hypothesis to conclude and state how the rest of the thesis is going to look. What you can do from this mind map is then build a table of contents, pull it all together, derive it from your mind map. And here might be a table of contents that we might use in order. And I'll leave you this to think about, and these are all the ideas that lead into my table of contents, that lead, lead into my introduction, and I can quickly imagine how this might turn into 5,000 words for that introduction. So, thank you very much for listening.
Um, good luck as you build your table of contents and um, uh, we'll see you next time.